Hello once again everybody. I am in my garage. My nice and messy garage. And uh, you can tell that I have kind of took, taken something off of the track. This back wheel right here had a little wobble to it. It was like doing like this. Raining outside so y'all, I'd say y'all can probably hear that. You can hear it hitting the roof. But, I had a wobble in this wheel. And what it was, I pulled this off, I was hoping it wasn't bearings. But, if you look here, that shaft does not move. It's solid. So, the bearings are good. What is worn out, well let me show you. Okay, so I want to try to talk loud enough for you to hear me over the rain. But, you can see what the wheel does, it has spines in here, and you can see there are spines on this shaft. Now the wheel just slides over it, and it is supposed to be, I think it's supposed to have a bushing that goes in this end. That bushing is gone. I don't know where it went, but it is gone. There's no bushing in there. So, when you slide this up over it, there it is. Okay, that's all the way up on it. It just went up on the spline. When I turn it now, it turns the axis. But, you can see, there's quite a bit of movement here. That is because there's no spacer inside here. And, like I said, I don't know what happened to it. The only thing that was there was this, and this goes between here and the axle nut, and it doesn't space that out, so it doesn't do anything about the wall. There's supposed to be a piece in there. So, I've looked around, and what I have found that I think will work, got an old socket, it just fits over the axle, a tight fit, and then it also, uh, I'll probably show you better on this side, it is a good fit to this, it moves just a little bit, but not much at all, so this will take most of that wobble out, only thing is, of course the socket, by design, will not slip over this, because it has the, uh, part that you put the wrench into. So, I'm thinking, I'm going to take my grinder and cut off right about here, and that will leave this part as a space. Okay, there's that part. All right, well, as it turns out, with the size of the inside of this, it goes over the threads, but it stops on there. See, I could only try it to here before. When the threads end, there's a little shoulder here. And right now, it goes on to there, and it hits. And it's got to go all the way back to here. So we've got to get it all the way up on there. Okay, I drilled as far. I don't have a drill bit big enough. All one I got is too big. <laughs> So, the only one I got that was even close was too big, so. What we're going to do, i got this step bit, and I'm going to hold it against the sides. We're going to do a little bit of hillbilly machining here. Let me go try it. Nope. Still won't fit yet. Got 
There we go. Now it goes right up on there. So all we gotta do, took off all the slack. Now we just gotta put the wheel on and find out what happens. It is better, but it still moves. You can see there is a gap. Maybe you can. Right there. You can see there's still a little bit of a gap in there. I got this little spacer right here that I made out of a piece of a paint can. Let's see. I can't do something with that. Now, what I'm thinking, get it completely centered and If I can weld all the way around and weld that piece in, then it should hold. Okay, now, yes, the rim is aluminum, but the sleeve that has the spines in it is steel. So I've got my welder hooked up. It should ground through the aluminum into the steel. Okay, if it'll just go it's on there, yeah. Not much movement at all. I think it's got it. Yeah, we can put everything back together. Okay, now that I got all that back together and everything is good and not moving, that is not where the batteries want to go. Uh, but I had the battery just kind of strapped in right here. And I really don't want that. I want to try to neaten these wires up a little and stuff. So I was thinking if I could have the battery up here. And what I've got is this came out of Zephyr to a fire extinguisher holder. Now it's going to be a battery tray. We'll weld it up there, weld it here, stick the battery in there, and I can actually strap, I'm gonna take this off. I can actually strap the battery itself down up in this corner and I can fit a much bigger battery than this scooter battery because I'm gonna have I'm planning on having like a radio and all that in the dash, so that way I can keep all my stuff powered. So let's make this fit. Here is going to be my battery bracket. 
to hold the battery in. What this is, is a piece of banding. Uh, I don't remember, it might have been wrapped around that hawk. All I did, I took my pliers and just bent it. And then you can bend it back and forth a couple of times and it breaks. And what I'm gonna do is, it fits right on the battery. Then I have to center it more. One part. This is the battery. And this battery like fits perfectly in that tray. That was not planned, but right now I want to take and you can see that the strap is going right down the battery. Uh, that battery is secure. All right battery ain't going nowhere it is screwed in there got my fuses right there easy to get to and I got the battery off of where it was just kind of hanging there so yeah that's a lot better okay right here it'll focus in right here is a little remote control and you double click this I believe I still have an exhaust leak. But you push that and it kills it. And then if you want to park it somewhere that you're not sure if anybody's going to mess with it, you do that. And then if somebody was to put that down. And then one more time. So, that has, uh, that has that. <laughs> Let's see. All right, well, we got a few things done today. Got our back wheel tightened up. Uh, got a new exhaust leak that I got to fix now, but that's okay. And I moved the battery up to here, put a new battery box in. Got a remote starter and alarm hooked back up. So, well, we've done a little bit today anyway. It's a little soppy and wet out. I don't think I'm going to go test drive it right now because, well, like I said before, there's no fenders and there's no floor, so I will get soaked. Anyway, yep, one more time, we'll hit the uh, starter button. That's kind of cool. That's a cheap little uh, uh, remote start thing. I'll put a link in the description for it. It's like less than 20 bucks or something like that. I got the same thing on the Hawk. I didn't hook up the remote starter uh, on the Hawk, though. It doesn't seem like it's a good idea to have your motorcycle remote started and sitting there running without you around it because, uh, well, the obvious, somebody jump on and take off. With this, it's eventually going to have a cab. You know, it's going to be covered and stuff. So, it's a lot less likely somebody's going to jump on this and take off with it. It's more of a novelty thing anyway. But, anyway, I guess that's probably going to be about it for this video. Appreciate everybody watching. See y'all on the next one.